to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Maloney. I'm joined today by Meredith Hancock, the president of Thomas Edison State University. Meredith, thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. Higher education has been forced to break barriers and innovate through the past two years. You yourself are known for delivering innovative education programs for adult students even before the pandemic. Given what you already knew about adult education, how did the pandemic experience change or amplify your views and thought processes regarding adult education? When, when we have a crisis, leadership pays off. So Thomas Edison was already a leader in non-traditional education and virtual learning. So when everybody else was focusing on that, we didn't need to focus on shifting to a virtual world. We were able to focus on the needs of the workforce. The pandemic amplified the focus on non-traditional learning. So it certainly didn't change my view, but it brought a sense of urgency and uh, popularity to the notion of non-traditional adult education. Around the world, we saw industries collapse. And unfortunately, the employees of those industries were the ones to take the brunt of the fall. Now, Abby, we've seen that before in the world, but normally it's more in select industries, maybe the automaking industry. And it's over a longer period of time. With the pandemic, we just saw it across the board. Um, and, and what we got out of that was we didn't have years or decades to turn around the, um, the economy and the workforce. We had to do it in months. That, that's where Thomas Edison shines. We, we were made for the moment. So, you know, we know how to reach people wherever and whenever uh, they're available. We know how to provide industry-related academic programming. And we know how to reach out to the employers to find out what they need. So immediately after the world started shutting down, our phones started ringing from employees who wanted to retool and get themselves prepared for the new workforce. What was it going to look like after the pandemic? And how were they as competitive as possible? So since we already had the online or virtual work environment, we were able to focus on our academic programming and assessing our students' non-traditional and adult learning for credit and see how we could get them on the path to rebuilding their their employment when we came back to what we thought would be a more normal economy. And in what ways has Thomas Edison State University become more creative in the delivery of education to the working adult population? Well, we thought we were nimble before. We thought we could be where they needed, whenever they needed, but we had to look at it in a different position. We're now breaking down the degree. We're looking at it in more micro um, credentials. We're looking to make sure each course speaks directly to what employers need. So it's, it's the delivery and it's what we're delivering and how and when we're delivering it. So for us, it's been yet another challenge to the way we do business and to say, how can we rethink it to meet the real time and split second needs of today's workforce? The pandemic accelerated an already fast evolving economy morphing the needs of the market and opportunities available for talent. What significant shifts are you witnessing in student career desires and their pathways to achieve those careers? And how have you been successful in addressing those shifts? So as I mentioned, Thomas Edison is focused on the adult working student. Uh, we were already seeing in the world that people were, were looking to have more agency over their lives and their work. I think that was starting to be a movement before the pandemic. When the pandemic came, it gave people, the um, employers and employees, the option or maybe forced upon them the opportunity to reevaluate their relationships with each other. Coming out of that as the economy is rebuilding, people are taking more chances. They're, they're willing to step back and reevaluate job satisfaction, work-life balance, the meaning of their work, their trajectory. Meanwhile, employers are being forced to think more progressively about how they recruit, develop, and retain top talent. So the whole relationship has done, done quite a change. And even now, as we're facing this odd combination that I um, almost call the stagflation of the employment market, we know a lot of people who can't get jobs, yet we know that, um, that it is a red hot job market that there's, um, you know, employers can't find employees. So it's really an odd, uh, an odd combination of odd friction, I would say. So with Edison, we've gone back to the table and we're looking at its matchmaking opportunity. We're helping the students upskill and retool into the professions that excite them. We're taking inventory of their skill sets and trying to evaluate those for credit to see, if, see what they really have to go back to the classroom to learn. 
But meanwhile, we're also reaching out to the employers and trying to find out what do they need? Where, where do they see growth? Um, what are their talent pathways? And, and a piece with Thomas Edison, our students may be in the classroom tonight and they're in the job tomorrow. So what they're learning needs to be relevant immediately. And they need to be able to take it to work. We don't have time to redevelop a curriculum. So we're just, we're really focusing on that match between employers and what they're finding they need in the post pandemic world and employees and what they're finding they want and, and helping to find that collaborative environment. As we round out our discussion today on creativity, what role does creativity play in remaining competitive in today's landscape? Creativity is the role. The only way to stay competitive today is to be creative and innovative. I, you know, we used to talk about the half-life of knowledge being 10 years and we changed it to five years. I think we're approaching the nanosecond range. And, and that's why I love Thomas Edison. True to our namesake, we, we, embrace, um, we embrace change. We embrace informed, but risk-taking. Um, we believe that's how you drive progress. So we're constantly challenging and building upon what we have. Um, you know, as I was saying earlier, our students are on the job now. So they bring to us, if we're not getting it right, they will let us know in a heartbeat. If we're not up with industry, they will let us know in a heartbeat. And oftentimes our students bring experiences um, that really add value to the classroom. They are the expert. They're living a certain area of something they're studying. We have to be creative and constantly trying to feed that back in and keeping, keeping the curriculum so alive and rich, keeping our services alive with what is going on in their lives. Certainly, um, going back to the pandemic a bit when everybody lost childcare. Even if you're studying virtually, you need uninterrupted time to study. We had to keep working with that. Uh, we also had to work with it with our own employment and our own employees on how we, how we addressed um, staying productive in a time of change. So I, I think that that culture of having an open mind to change and being welcoming of change, and in fact, really embracing it is, is what makes Thomas Edison so strong and at the forefront of academic innovation, student empowerment, and, and workforce growth. And, and if I can link that back a little bit to a conversation we had about employers and employees, I think our commitment and, and really our thriving on creativity is what keeps our employees so happy and motivated by the Thomas Edison mission. They're challenged every day. They, um, we're wrong sometimes, but we fail forward, we fail fast, and, and we're always pushing the envelope on what's the next thing to help our students be successful. Thank you so much, Meredy. Thank you. This has been fun. Well, that was Meredy Hancock, the president of Thomas Edison State University. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to hear more CEOs and thought leaders share both their opinions and advice on the current business climate. Until next time, I'm Abby Maloney, and this has been Invest Insights. Thanks for tuning in.